Right, good morning. On this tape we're going to look at um, how the body is protected from disease. <clears throat> All round about us there's lots of nasty bacteria and potential pathogenic organisms. How is it that most of the time most of us are not ill? So the first thing we're going to look at is uh, the obvious layer of protection on the surface of the body, which is the skin. So we're going to start off and look at some uh, anatomy and physiology of the skin. And as is often the case, it's probably a good idea if we try and uh, draw a diagram. <clears throat> so we'll have a top layer of the skin here. I'm going to leave a small gap there and a slightly bigger gap there. And um, coming from this gap, going down into the deeper structures of the skin, we've got a long, thin duct that ends in a coil. Coiled up tube at the bottom there. And this is actually a gland which produces sweat. So this structure here is a sweat gland. Located fairly deep in the skin. So sweat would be produced in the sweat gland and would rise up the duct, this is the duct of the sweat gland, where it would be deposited on the surface of the body as sweat. Now this one is a larger structure that widens out at the bottom. Sometimes got some auxiliary structures about here. And this is a structure where a hair is housed. It's called a hair follicle. And in here you would have a hair. The root section at the bottom. And the shaft of the hair rising up through the hair follicle. The brown one in this case. The hair is produced from dividing skin cells in a layer down here at the bottom of the root. So this is the area of active cell division, of active mitosis. And then by the time the cells get up into the shaft of the hair, they're, they're already dead. So a hair consists of dead cells. Now, it's important to realize that the skin is in two layers. The top layer is relatively thin, and it's divided from the lower layer by a wavy line like this. And of course, this is actually in three dimensions in, in real life. The two surfaces are separated by this junction. And the top layer of the skin is known as the epidermis. And the lower layer, all this layer here at the bottom, which extends down to around about this level here. This lower layer is referred to as the dermis. So the skin then is in two layers. The epidermis at the top, this relatively thin layer. It's separated from the dermis by this 
wavy junction. This next part is the dermis. And then below the dermis here, we have various subcutaneous tissues. And here you start to get fibrous tissues and different, different sorts of tissues, depending on the, the part of the body the skin is overlying. But in most parts of the body, you get a layer of fatty tissue underneath, immediately underneath the dermis. Fatty tissue, therefore, is known as the adipose layer. So the adipose layer. This uh, gland here, is, uh, this is actually a gland, I haven't mentioned it's a gland yet, but it is. And this produces a substance called sebum. And it's a sebaceous gland. Sebaceous gland. And the sebaceous gland produces sebum, which is like a waxy, oily substance. So when your hair goes a bit greasy, it's because sebum is deposited on it. And it's a useful, natural, waterproofing substance. So here we have the skin, we've got the skin, we've got the epidermis, we've got the dermis, we've got a subcutaneous tissue which is usually adipose tissue. And the layer of adipose tissue uh, tends to be thicker in females than in males. Um, females tend to store their adipose tissue subcutaneously all over the surface of the body. Whereas males tend to store most of their adipose tissue anyway in the abdomen. So when females become obese, they tend to become obese everywhere. Uh, all the subcutaneous tissues have more fat in them. Whereas male obesity very often presents as a abdominal obesity because of the nature of uh, nature of distribution of fat storage. Now, the top layer of the, the, the bottom layer, sorry, of the uh, dermis, epidermis, sorry, is an area of active cell division. So there is active mitosis going on in the uh, bottom layer of the epidermis, round about here, at the bottom of the epidermis. So the cells here are alive and actively dividing by simple cell division, the process of mitosis. For this reason, this bottom layer of the epidermis is called the mitotic layer. Where mitosis is actively carrying on. As these cells age, they're replaced by new cells from the mitotic layer, and these cells generally work their way to start to work their way towards the surface of the epidermis. <coughs> so that eventually these uh, skin cells slough off the surface. So especially when you've had a bath and you rub yourself, you get you get areas of skin rubbing off on the towel. They, 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 these are epidermal cells which are being uh, sloughed off the, the surface of the skin, being replaced all the time by new epidermal cells from underneath. And in fact, um, most dust you get in houses is uh, sloughed off human epidermal cells. So if you didn't have people in the house, you wouldn't need to dust very often. But the dermis is it's quite different from the epidermis physiologically. There are no nerve cells or blood vessels 
in the epidermis. But 